This is a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport, and this is its bigger brother, the Subaru Outback Onyx XT. Today we're going on an adventure that includes 100 miles of freeway and a segment of the Washington Overlanding Trail to see if bigger really is better. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Starting with the 2021 models, Subaru finally added something to the Crosstrek that buyers have been asking for since it was introduced. More horsepower. Sport and limited trims were blessed with a larger 2.5 liter boxer engine, which bumped power from 152 horses to a much more acceptable 182. Its larger brother, the Outback Onyx XT, comes with a turbocharged 2.4 liter engine, making 260 horsepower. Of course, the Outback is larger and heavier, but even after doing some basic math, we can figure the Crosstrek Sport generates 111.5 horsepower per ton, whereas the Outback Onyx XT manages 133, a significant difference in favor of the Outback. But a car is more than just horsepower. Which is more fun? Which has better economy? And which of these two are simply more capable? That is what we're hoping to find out today. In terms of other features, both of these cars have Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive, both have continuously variable transmissions, and both have dual-function X mode. The Outback Onyx XT has a ridiculously large infotainment system, the Crosstrek a much more humble 6.5-inch setup. Active safety features are similar, as both come with the EyeSight system. This 2021 Crosstrek Sport is actually one of my personal cars. It has a number of options and is priced at $28,655 US dollars, including delivery. This Outback Onyx XT is a long-term test vehicle provided by Subaru. We built it to your specifications during a live stream last year, and it is priced at $39,718 as you see it, more than 10 grand over the price of the Crosstrek Sport. The first leg of our journey will be a freeway drive from Bellevue to Ellensburg, Washington. Carlina will be driving the Outback and I'll be in the Crosstrek. On the freeway, we both reset tripometers so we can compare the computer's economy estimations along the way. I just finished a 3,600 mile drive in that Subaru Outback. And I have to say it was one of the most comfortable long journeys I've ever taken. And that's all without like, you know, fancy high-end stuff like seat massagers. It's just a comfortable, solid car. And I even ran into some snow along the way and it dealt with it just fine because of course it has symmetrical all-wheel drive. You know, Subarus are really great just because they're not a compromise to drive every single day. You know, they don't drive like a big lumberous truck, but when the chips come down and weather gets foul, the Subaru can deal with it and it deals with it like a pro. And that is why I think these cars have become so popular. Good morning, Carolina. What is your gauge show? For total range, I'm showing 380 until I'm out of gas. Mine is showing 450. Have a I think my car is going to be more economical. So we, we'll check back in uh, with you in a little bit and uh, let's head over to Ellensburg. One of the big features of that Outback is the fact that it is really quiet inside and that is thanks to the acoustic glass on the front window. This one also has acoustic glass but it's just not as quiet. It is close though, and I think it really comes down to the fact that they just put less sound deadening into these smaller cross tracks because it's a different audience. What's your uh, MPGs at right now, your average? 25.6. 25.6, huh? Mine is 31.2. No. The Outback also, of course, has a massive screen in the middle. And this one only has a little six and a half inch. I do kind of miss the big screen. Being able to see Apple CarPlay maps just massive in the middle there, it's just kind of a nice feature to have, uh, but it doesn't really move me as a buyer. Uh, case in point, I bought this car, not that car. Okay, we've now done the first 28.5 miles and we've been doing basically adaptive cruise control the whole time between 60 and 70 miles per hour with the auto lane centering feature. So our driving dynamics are basically the same. What's your MPGs looking like? 
right now, 26.5. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm rolling at 31.1. Economy is really gonna suffer on the first leg of this trip. And that's because we're climbing up over Snoqualmie Pass. We're going up for the first half of it and then going down for the second half of it. But our down never quite meets up with the amount of up that we go. So don't use these numbers as a comparison to EPA numbers because the EPA tests, they're on a level surface. We're not doing that today. This first stretch is 100 miles. We're going from Bellevue, Washington to Ellensburg. From Ellensburg, we're going to Durr Road and Durr Road is part of the Washington Overlanding Trail. It's a 600 mile journey from the south part of Washington to the north part, mostly on dirt roads. Today, we're just gonna get a small taste of it. We're coming up over the summit here. Let me check in with Carlina. We're at 43 miles. What's your uh, MPGs looking like right now that we've hit 43 miles and we're cresting over Snoqualmie Pass? 24. So mine has dropped as well. Of course, it's because we're going up a very steep climb for many miles, and I'm down to 27.8. However, both of our MPGs are definitely gonna increase once we start going down the other side. So I'll check in again with you once we get closer to Ellensburg. One thing that I really like about the Subaru Outback is the fit it has LED headlights. This one, you still get the old school halogens, which, for 2021, I think is kind of a weird omission to use such low output headlights. However, not all is perfect with those LEDs. When I was driving across the plains of Northern, where was I, Northern Nevada, every single trucker would flash their high beams at me as though I had my high beams on when I didn't. That's the Outback. You can see how bright those headlights are right now even. So far we've been driving close to 100 miles and this one definitely is not as comfortable as the Outback for long-term journeys. The shorter wheelbase, the slightly tighter suspension setup, it just makes for a jumpier driving environment. It's also slightly louder and all those things add up to making this not as enjoyable for really long trips. Doesn't make it bad, it just means that like, if I'm gonna do 3,600 miles again, I'm gonna pick the Outback over the Crosstrek. Now let's see how MPGs are doing now that we're getting close to 100 miles of range here. We've now gone up the Cascade Mountains and slightly down it. Um, although we've definitely gone more climbing than we have descent because we're at about 2,000 feet here and we started at sea level. Okay, we're entering Ellensburg and uh, what's your MPGs looking like? 27.2, as of right now. 27.2, really? What do you have? 31.7, so not quite as big of a delta as I would have expected. And I think the real issue is that climbing up the mountains, because you have more power, so your vehicle does it easier. I drove that vehicle 3,600 miles recently, and I was not being quite so subtle with the throttle. <laughs> I ended up getting, I think I was around averaging 23 miles to the gallon overall. But of course, that's a lot more accelerating, decelerating, higher speeds, and all that other kind of stuff. Well, we all know you also have a lead foot. This is true. So the Crosstrek has better MPGs a bit when mountains are involved, but it's also not quite as comfortable to drive as the Outback. So I'm actually going to give this segment of the trip a win to the Outback because it is clearly the better choice. And though, yeah, you are gonna get awful MPGs in the Outback if you really let your throttle down. Basically, if you get into that boost range where it's putting out maximum power, it is going to give you much lower MPG. However, if you're gentle with the throttle and you're just cruising along, you can get 27 miles to the gallon, even climbing up a mountain, and that is pretty awesome. This one, 31.9, nothing to sneeze at. So this one's good, but I think for freeways, the Outback, that one's still great. Now we are outside of Ellensburg on Durr Road. Now this is actually a classic stagecoach road from the 1800s. Yeah, it was a paid road. Now this is the craziest story. Some dude, enterprising guy said, you know what? 
I'm going to shave 10 miles off of people's journey across those snowy mountains. And I'm going to do it by building a toll road. He charged 25 bucks in the 1800s. I did the math. That it is was, insane. It was roughly $700 by today's dollars what? to go over this road. And the crazy thing was stagecoaches couldn't fit up the switchbacks. Oh so he had these crazy turnstiles that the stagecoach would enter, it would rotate, and then go up to the next switchback. Huh. And so <laughs> today we have much more convenient means of getting up there. We have the 2020 Subaru Outback Onyx XT, which is on loan to us from Subaru. And then we have my personal Subaru Crosstrek Sport with the larger 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. So, Carlina, you've seen kind of the road that we're on. Yeah. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere here. Yeah, we are. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think it's going to be a fun adventure. I don't think we're going to get stuck this time unlike all the other times, but it's a bit cold. So we might get, you know, encounter some ice, some slippage here and there, yeah. but I don't think we'll have it as rough as they did back in the day in their stagecoaches. Yeah. And if we do encounter rough conditions, that's where we'll be able to test out dual function X mode, which is on both of these vehicles. That one has it, that one has it, which is better on an old stagecoach road. That's what we're going to find out. Let's talk about what overlanding is. Overlanding is not extreme off-roading. The two are very different. Overlanding is typically going on a journey to a location off the beaten path, sometimes off the grid, usually on some kind of like personal journey. Like you're trying to discover not just a new location, but also discover a little bit of yourself in the process. It's something you do when you're looking for bigger meaning in the world. So overlanding can mean something slightly different to everyone. However, the typical thing that you think of are really rough roads, remote locations, snow-peaked mountains. We're not gonna be camping, or we're not gonna be doing all the other stuff, and we're not gonna be you know, out here for days. Uh, this is really just a taste of what overlanding is like. And I, I'm really kind of curious how well this vehicle does compared to its larger brother, the Onyx XT. Now I have pre-run this first quarter mile with the Outback, so I have some idea what we're getting into, but not exactly. Already I can tell the suspension is stiffer on this Crosstrek than it is on the Outback. Possibly it's because of weight, so it, it, this vehicle responds with much more jumpiness and much more harshness. Uh, but the Outback, it kind of smooths this road over a little bit more. And there is something else that I have to really point out. First thing is that we are running stock tires on both of these. I want this comparison to be as equal as possible. Both these vehicles are as you get them from the showroom floor. I have done nothing to this vehicle. I have not even added underbody protection, which might be a mistake. I'm hoping it's not. So I have to be super careful on this trip or my wife will not be pleased. Now it's crazy to think that this road I have read is even better than it was back when it was a stagecoach route. This is actually smoother and easier to cross, which is just blows my mind what people went through back in the day to get where they wanted to go. Usually, you know, looking for opportunity um, or looking for a better life or, you know, just trying to do something to change their stars. They would head out west and they would get into a wagon and they would cross, cross just in what today we would think were impassable locations and they did it. So far it's rough and it's narrow, but it's not too bad. This is doing fine. Of course, we're going downhill. So we have gravity at our back. We have not aired down the tires, although these rocks are kind of on the sharp side. I might consider doing that just to reduce the opportunity for a puncture. I'm curious how Carlina's doing back there. I know there's so many old parts of Washington that I've never been to. So much history that I don't know about this state. And I honestly love history. So this is extra special to me to be out here on this old pioneer wagon road. This is awesome.
our wagons are a little bit different. So we'll see how they might fare in this journey as compared to, you know, stagecoaches. Even just driving through this area, it is so beautiful. Kind of desert vibe to it. You got a bunch of sagebrush, which is my favorite. I can't even imagine going through this on back in the day on your stagecoach. That'd be so cool. How you doing back there? Are you getting rattled yet? It is not as bad as I was expecting. <laughs> uh, earlier on the highway, I was saying it's such a smooth ride, and I was curious how this was about to go. So far, so good. Very impressed. I can tell you right now, you're having a smoother ride than I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see those zigzags over there? I saw a reference online, and I don't know if it's true, that that was the original wagon trail that they used that they went up with the stagecoaches. That incline would suck. As we go around the corner here, oh wow! No, nah, no, nah, you couldn't pay me enough to go to go up that in a wagon. Heck, I wouldn't even go up that in a car. Yeesh. Now, when I was looking at the travel guides, they said that this road is one of the more gnarly sections of the Washington Overlanding Trail. And there are big rocks, but so far this is easy. And I feel kind of confident that, you know, with the Subaru here, I don't have to worry about, actually some of these rocks are really big. Got to keep uh, active eyes on what we're doing here. If I'm not paying attention, a single rock here will totally take out my oil pan. Luckily, they are spaced far enough apart that I can get around them no problem. Okay. And this is tight, that's for sure. So far, not a big deal. Good, that is rolling. Oop, that's a big rock. Gotta pay attention. Like, I want to look it up here, but I gotta keep my eyes down here because of all these big boulders in the way. Nice little old timey bridge over a river we got going on here. That's cool. At the bottom of the ravine, we found some mud, which was a great opportunity to have some fun with a little game of follow the leader. So how did that feel to you? Fine. I mean, I still got a spine. How about you? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> to see how each car handled this differently, we switched vehicles and ran through it a couple more times. Oh man, this is so much smoother. Oh, bigger too. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, what? It definitely has a lot more momentum as you hit those big divots in the road. Oof. Yeah, I think that in this condition, the cross track is much better. I mean, this is okay. This is fun, but it's it's not as quick. It's not as easy to drive on this stuff because it's just big. Woo! <laughs> Slip, sliding everywhere. Oh, this is fun. I love this. We still had a lot of rough miles and unknown challenges ahead of us, so we got back into our original cars and pressed forward. Appear to be a little rougher than the uh, first half. To go to the right, this is a steep climb. Actually, surprisingly rough. I would not take a Camry on this. Okay, now we're getting into a really rough terrain. <laughs> Ooh, this is a little more uh, brutal than before. Oh boy, there are some big rocks here. Watch, make sure we're straddling. 
appropriately. So what's your fuel economy looking like now? I'm at 26.6. I'm only at 23 even. Oh, it's interesting how... The changes in what it's doing don't really seem to impact it as much. This is gonna get, oh boy, there's a cross cut, but it doesn't really look that bad. Oh, well, yeah, it's enough to lift a wheel. Okay, this is where I'm gonna switch it into X mode. So I'm gonna hit the button down here. I think just regular snow dirt is fine, and away we go. And power is redistributed around the system, and up we go. Did you get wheel flip there, just turn on X mode. Yep, yep. Do you know how X mode works? I'm finding it out right now. <laughs> okay. Snur snow, dirt, snow. I uh, just snow dirt is fine. Snow. Okay, okay. Okay, just put, put your foot in, keep, keep your foot in. Okay. Put, keep your foot in, the throttle will figure itself out. Okay. Fine, just keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> okay. And that's the funny thing with X mode. It feels like you're not doing the right thing, but in fact, you are. So the interesting thing about seeing Carlina's car there, and maybe exterior footage will prove me wrong, but it seemed like the Crosstrek made a better job of that challenging uh, position. When the one wheel was completely lifted off the ground, the cross truck was able to get out of it very quickly. Even after Carlina turned on the same single mode X mode, which is just the deep snow and dirt, it had to think longer, which is interesting. Now granted, not all traction situations are identical and the longer wheelbase on that vehicle might have changed the dynamics. So we have to keep that in mind as well. Can you just imagine what it was like to take a carriage up a road even rougher than this in the 1800s? Knowing that there is no other way to get where your destination is. And in fact, you may not have had a home to go back to the other way. You had to get through. It makes our little journey with symmetrical all-wheel drive and Exmo just seem so easy by comparison. In fact, it, it kind of like, it blows my mind how far we've come. You might be thinking, well, this isn't really overlanding because we're not staying the night. We're not going to a place that nobody has ever been. You know, it's, it, this is really overlanding light. And I understand that. What we're really doing today is just showing some of the capabilities, you know, doing some of the stuff that the vehicles will encounter in the real world uh, if you were to attempt an overlanding trip. And between these two vehicles, I would absolutely take the Outback over the Crosstrek if I was, you know, going to an off-grid area. It's just, it's a more comfortable vehicle in those conditions. I like the extra horsepower, but I have to say, I'm not really missing horsepower. I like the horsepower specifically for highways, which there's always gonna be highways in the United States. But when it comes to like this off-road stuff, this has plenty of power now. And that was not the case with the old Crosstrek. The old Crosstrek's uh, little two liter engine was fine, but it was not good. It was the absolute basic. This one is exactly what you need. You know, it's, I, I have not once thought I need more power. It's a little obstacle there, not too bad. Well, I feel like we're on top of the world now. I wonder where this goes. Okay, so in that case, I guess we are overlanding because I have no idea where I'm going. Yes, other people have been here, but I never have. You see how far that antenna array still is? I thought we were like there. It looks like we got a ways to go. Okay, well, quit slowing us down there, Carlina. Sorry, I'm just enjoying the views. It's pretty cool out here. It feels like we're the only people out here at all. Like, there's nobody for hundreds of miles. Which yes. sure isn't the case since the town of Ellensburg is right over there. But <laughs> this is, this is really, this is epic. This doesn't feel to me like Washington. I've done a lot, a lot of exploring um, 
is driving like random back roads out in the middle of nowhere like this. But this one is insanely unique and I'd still feel that way even if it didn't have all the snow that which we are approaching. Big boulders on either side. Make sure I don't bump them and scratch. Don't get shunted into them. So far, my only complaint really is that the suspension's a little on the stiff side. That's it. So you know how I gave you uh, kind of hard time for bringing snow boots along today? <laughs> well, it looks like you're maybe gonna need them. See, whenever I come out here with you, I always have to be prepared because you never know what's going to happen. The towers came closer and closer, and it was becoming apparent that we really lucked out with our timing of this adventure. A week sooner and the snowdrifts across the trail would have been near impossible to cross safely. But even in the face of these hazards, both Subarus were really up to the challenge. Would I recommend doing this without a skid plate? No, not really. It only takes one misplaced rock to puncture an oil pan. And though the Onyx XT does come with a full-size spare, the Crosstrek Sport does not, making it overall less suited for this type of an adventure from the factory. Several hours after starting the adventure, we finally made it to the pass. Both the Crosstrek Sport and the Onyx XT came through what was more a drive testing rugged endurance than anything else. If there were two things I would wish for here, it would be additional ground clearance and more aggressive tires. If Subaru could deliver a car from the factory with those features, I think it would really open the door to even more amazing adventures to a much wider group of buyers. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so what did we learn today? In spite of the vast similarities between these two vehicles, they're actually quite different when you start driving them. And that's not just because of the size and the weight, but also decisions that Subaru made regarding uh, suspension tuning. Am I glad that I bought the Crosstrek? Yeah, of course, because I also have a 4Runner. So I kind of have the vehicles that are on both sides of that Outback Onyx XT. One a little bit bigger, more off-roady. This one is a little less off-roady and smaller. It's kind of a great combination. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryan Douthit. This has been our look at the Outback Onyx XT and its smaller counterpart, the Crosstrek Sport. Is one better than the other? Well, no. One will be more appropriate depending on how you want to drive and where you want to go. For the trails like today, I would say that the Outback would be the better choice. It's just more comfortable. And of course, it has more space so you can carry more gear with you. This one's a little limited if you want to try the actual overlanding because basically you throw a cooler and sleeping pad and a sleeping bag back there and you're pretty much full. What do you think? What would you take? Would you take this Crosstrek Sport or the Outback Onyx XT? Post a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here next week.